In this video, we're going to go ahead and make a little bit of an adjustment to make it a little bit easier for us to test with. So currently, the way we have this set up is when we press play or go to log in, what happens is it loads up on our web page and we have to verify our application. Now, we're going to go ahead and switch using the dev authentic authentication, sorry that word's hard not for me, tool to go ahead and allow us to basically bypass this. So that's what we're going to be using for the future of this series, and it's just going to prevent us from having to do this each and every single time. So let's go ahead and close that down, and let's go ahead and get that tool. So what we have to do is this is actually located inside of the SDK. So if we head over to our EOS SDK that we downloaded in the first part, or if you still don't have it, you can go to your dev portal, download SDK, go grab the CSDK, and just grab the latest version. But it'll be in here, and if we go to SDK, Tools, you'll see here we have the Dev Auth tool. So what you want to do is you want to open that up. You'll see it contains all these files. Create a new folder like I did here, and I named mine Dev Auth Tool, and just drag everything that you see inside of it. Once that's done, You'll be met with this application here. You can just either open it directly from here, or what I did was I just created a simple shortcut right here on my desktop. So once you've done all that, go ahead and open up that tool. And here we want to set up the port of which we want to use. So for now, I'm just going to use 8081. Hit Submit. Log in. And here you're going to have to log in to your Epic Games account. So I'm going to do that really quickly. Then once that is done, You'll be met with this page here for adding a credential name. So I'm going to give mine the name of, uh, let's just do YouTube cred name. So I'm going to copy that, make sure I remember, hit save, and now we are good to go. We now have our credential here for testing. So back inside of our uh, EOS game instance.cpp, what we want to do is we want to actually change this up. So right now we're not going to be using the type of account portal. We're not going to be basically doing any of this kind of setup. We're still gonna be using these credentials. However, it is going to be laid out in a different format. So first off, we want to change the type. We're not gonna be using account portal. We're gonna be using developer. Then next up, we have the ID. So the ID is going to be basically our loopback address and the port. So if you recall, we used 8081. So that's gonna be 127.0.0.1 colon 8081. Then as far as the token goes, that is going to be your credential name, the one that matches up right here. So once you have that done, go ahead and perform our live coding, which I have not enabled for this. All right, got live coding set back up. And let's see. So I press play, and there we go. On login success one. So we no longer have to wait, and we no longer have to confirm through the uh, dev, well, not the dev portal, but whatever, I don't know what that screen's actually called that pops up there. So once that happens, that allows us to go through, we can create our session, and go from there. The last thing I want to do for this video is let's go to our settings, go to, I'm being, there we go, project settings, don't know why I was being blind. Scroll down to Online Subsystem EOS, and under all the crossplay settings, we want to go ahead and just enable all of these because we are going to be making use of EOS Plus in the upcoming videos to, well, as you can assume here, work with crossplay. So, what we're going to be doing is, well, in this case specifically, interacting between Steam and Epic. So, for things like listing friends, we're going to be creating a just an array of our friends, and we're going to iterate through them to print out all of our Steam friends' names as well as our Epic friends' names, and we can do that using EOS Plus. Now, I want to—I'm uh, going to actually bring up a web page really quick. Let me find it, and that'll help kind of explain the differences between EOS and EOS Plus. Okay, so here we are. So basically, EOS is—you can think of that. Compare it to the Steam online subsystem. So the EOS online subsystem is basically just its own subsystem. It's not built for cross-platform or anything like that. That's what EOS Plus extends it for. 
So we have EOS, which could be thought of as just like a Steam online subsystem where, you know, you would just be using Steam. If we go down here to EOS Plus, it has its own set of settings and there's its own stuff that we're going to have to set up in our default engine, which isn't bad, but you can see here in their example, they use the default platform service as EOS Plus. And then we have the native platform service, which is Steam. So if we have Steam open, when we launch our game, the Steam overlay and everything like that should pick up just as if we we're using the Steam online subsystem as our default subsystem, or our default, uh, what you call it in here. So our default platform service. That's basically kind of how it would go through. So it allows you to kind of interact between Epic and other platforms. So you can use the EOS services alongside things like Steam. So that's what we're going to be working on in the upcoming videos. We're going to be expanding on that a little bit. So again, make sure you have all of these under crossplay settings enabled. Go ahead and save your project, and I will see you in the next video. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description below, where I have a Team Deathmatch series just for Patreons using C++ and Unreal Engine. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord that's also linked down below, and I'll try to help you out. So, I'll see you in the next video.